What is GIS? Great question. Let's start with just one of probably countless examples we could choose from. So suppose you live somewhere like I do here in San Diego where we are getting more and more floods and you want to know if your home's at risk. You would want to know, are you in a floodplain? What about drainage? How much rain did you get? How might that change in the future? When you start to combine and layer all this data with GIS, you can actually see how at risk your home is to floods. It's very often said that data is the new oil, and GIS is a confluence of all of the different data sources that we have now, whether it's from the sky or from the ground or from mobile devices. Anytime it matters spatially how two things are related, and that's just about everything in this world, you need GIS. Whether you've heard of GIS or not, it's all around us. It's used by every major corporation to manage their supply chains and to pick where to build stores. It's used by utilities. It's used by transportation companies. It's used by every governmental body. But it's also about what's happening in your neighborhood, what's happening in your community, which is why it's kind of remarkable that so few people know about it. community occupies a space in the globe, right? For a city, the city is responsible for that space. From land parcels, to where our utilities located, to the conditions of the roads or the transportation system. All of that occupies the space. And so I really can't see a way to manage all that without GIS. With GIS mapping, we can work much more closely with communities that have been marginalized for so long. It gives you this ability to problem solve with so much more information. If you think about people are living on this much money and they have this size of household and they tend to be working multiple jobs, low wage jobs. Being able to see those layers gives you a different view so we can create a different future in those spaces. In the GIS industry, some estimates are that it's going to double between now and 2027. Our clients use GIS in insurance to help understand risk. In agriculture, it's used to help farmers make better decisions about what to plant. We also see a lot of businesses looking at how they optimize their supply chains. You can look across your entire network of suppliers and make different choices to meet whatever your goals are. And it could be about saving money, it could be about efficiency, but it may also be about sustainability. And those things don't contradict each other, they can all come together. GIS has been absolutely transformative. It's the ability to bring the art and the science of decision-making to the table. Let's say you're a retailer and you're thinking about expanding into new markets. You can look at, where do my customers live? Where do they shop? Where are my competitors? combine all this data, and you start to see great options for store locations. So we can use GIS to look at how their business decisions might impact their bottom line. Turn around, the coming down. SoCal Gas has 20 million customers who depend on us day in and day out to provide them with gas safely. It's believed that more than 100 homes have serious damage and there's real concern that residents may be trapped. Montecito was a major, major event. We brought our GIS team actually on site to Santa Barbara and they were working directly with first responders and we could manage it together as a collaborative team. By having all of our data on GIS, it allows different departments to go to the same portal. They can look at, are there environmental layers? Are there urban planning layers? Are there safety risk layers? So we can make much more holistic decisions in real time. That's what GIS has done for us. HDR is a global engineering firm. We do a lot of infrastructure, smartly designed with the environment in mind. Bridge design, water treatment facilities, architecture. 
Our clients wanted to see data in a way that was easy for everyone to understand. Taking the GIS that's typically seen in a horizontal space and into the vertical space, they can see project alternatives. It's really fun. You can make hundreds, thousands iterations. Would there be more trees? How would that look? What about the, the volumes of the buildings, etc.? The decision makers can see how their money are spent and the municipalities can see how their environment is developed. I think everybody wins. IUCN is the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. One of the key roles of IUCN is to convene all the necessary voices making the decision about what they can protect and where they can protect it. And it neutralizes the conversation. It does not become, I am arguing with you about this point. It's about using the map as the neutral space to share perspectives. So GIS is really one of the most important tools that's going to help the world to implement the appropriate conservation actions. We have a lot of working landscapes that could also be conservation landscapes, as long as we work with landowners to make sure that their needs are met. GIS can help us spatially organize and visualize what's important for people, what's important for animals. So coexistence is really what we're fighting for here. GIS allows us to get ahead of planning so that we can have that coexistence. So much of what people in developing countries face, uh, whether it is uh, the need for basic services or getting uh, children to school or getting goods to market, it's all geographic. The Sustainable Development Goals are the objectives adopted by all 193 UN member states to make a better future. Every one of the 17 goals needs GIS. You cannot fight poverty without knowing where poor people are. You can't fight hunger without understanding crop yields. You can't have universal health coverage without knowing where the clinics are. With thousands and thousands of layers of data, it's unimaginable to be thinking about these issues without GIS. I think a reason that GIS is used more and more is because it has to be. Many of the biggest challenges we're facing, economic, social, climate change and biodiversity loss, have to be understood in a geographic context. And the good news, given all these challenges, is that GIS is more powerful than ever. And that means that all the things that maps have helped us to solve over millennia, we now have an even more powerful tool to do those things with GIS. Thank you.